<laughs> All right, fellas. I've picked up some more New World RPA from Northern Monk, and we're just uh, popping these in the fridge in the old keezer. We've also got, oh, that's right, some Founders All Day IPA. Freaking right! We've got four cans of that because uh, Morrison's had them on the shelf. Correct, next to Brew Dog. Freaking right! And while I was in there, we had this screaming at me. There was one can left. I didn't know who it was by. Uh, I didn't know who it was by, but it looks very much Beaver Town esque with the artwork. In fact, the little uh, the little space people up here look like the old gamma ray man. Disco forklift truck. It's a mango pale ale by Drygate. Of Scotland. I've gone on the website here just to have a look what, uh, what they say about it. Mango Fandango Juice Pale Ale. Juicy pale ale loaded to the gunnels with US hops and mango. Sweet malt with soft bitter undertones. Shall we give her a whirl? This is a, a brewery that I've never heard of before. Mm, let's get a pull out and see what we've got. It was the last one on the uh, on the shelf. I didn't want to leave it on its own. And I thought, you know what, I'll just give it a punt. Huh. It definitely smells fruity. Mmm, can't put my nose on what it is though. Huh. That ain't bad. I mean, after drinking the old, the old Indy, independent pale ale from uh, from Brewdog, anything's pleasurable. I don't think I'll pick it up again. It's it's nothing fantastical. There is uh, definitely a, a good amount of bitterness to it, and it dries out quite quite a bit. But yeah, I can um, I can pick out some some of that mango, a little bit of tropical, but it's it's all a little subdued. Well, as you can see, I'm. Uh, filming this on Saturday as you can see I'm here and I'm not with Harry we we planned to do a brew day together today over at Harrison's brewery but um, we double booked we weren't free to, to do it on the Saturday today so we've moved it to the following week and I did say that I was gonna have some behind-the-scenes stuff for the patreon I'm gonna have a separate video going up uh, it could probably be up around about the same time as this um, as a bit of something else as well as next week we'll have the behind the scenes stuff around the brewery and that but I'm really looking forward to getting over and brewing I'm looking forward to seeing the kit and everything now it's all done because the last time I was over there there was nothing in there apart from uh, apart from a few cars so I'm really excited for that that's next Saturday but it gives us time to clear up the uh, the Pilsner so I'm not entirely sure if this is the correct way to do it and to be f honest with you I, I, I don't really care because I need to get the fermenter ready because I'm hopefully going to bring back some of what we brew up at Harry's so we can follow its progress here and, and ferment it through and whatnot. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, tomorrow on the Sunday is I'm going to keg the Pilsner. So I think the last time we updated on the Pilsner we'd uh, give it a diastole rest and it had that, it had two days sat at 18 and a half degrees and people were right by saying that the uh, the bubbling that's coming out of the blow off is probably the CO2 being released and of course um, as you um, as you warm up that beer it's not holding on to that CO2 anymore, it's letting it go so that's what was more than likely bubbling through the blow off once it had had its diastole rest, we then knocked it down again to, um, we sat it at 12 degrees, 11 degrees. So it's been sat for another week at 11 degrees, and I think I'm going to crash chill it today, and then tomorrow I'm going to keg it. But it means I need to get the keg out, uh, get everything ready for it, so that tomorrow we can just blitz it. 
I haven't actually had a look inside the keyser for quite some time. Uh, that lid has not been opened for a while and I want to see what it's like inside. I mean, you know you've been in at the start of the video. I don't know and I want to have a look. Uh, have a good look around it because I think there was a few concerns about condensation, especially around the STC and that's why I put together that little box which is down here. And I've still got it to fit if I need it, but I don't think I'm going to need it. But let's have a look, shall we? Let's have a ganders now. Oh, there we go. You can see I've obviously been in to put the beers in, but I haven't had a good, good look around it. Uh, okay. So, the good thing is, is that I can't see any mould in there. There is obviously the condensation that always occurs as the freezer kicks on and then uh, kicks off and the heater pushes air around as it starts to freeze on the edges it obviously melts it so that uh, that condensation always drips down there and I'm so pleased so so pleased that I put that uh, that false bottom in there that mermaid board and, and then sealed around the edges because that water can just be literally mopped up and it's not seeping into uh, into this and going mouldy and fusty there's a there's a good a good uh, sanitary uh, base to keep clean the fans the fans are still still working impeccably well the heaters doing its job all the cables are still fine there's no mold anywhere and there's no condensation to speak of uh, I wonder if that's dust yeah see the dust down here it's, it's bone dry so there's no there's been no condensation gathering there's no mold or anything like that that's uh, that's gathering and uh, oh she's kicked on and I'm happy with that I am happy with that so this keg we definitely know that this keg is a winner for sealing although when we tested this one this one's now okay but let's stick with this one so I'm going to drag this one out today get it cleaned ready for kegging the Pilsner but uh, like I say I'm happy with everything in there it's uh, it's just like the day we turned it on and the Pilsner is sat in here quite nicely I was looking for a lid and I couldn't find one but I wanted a lid the fermentation bucket lid that doesn't have the hole in for crash chilling because obviously when you uh, when you crash chill a bad boy like this it uh, sucks I've had it before where it sucked an entire um, container of star sand through the blow off I'm looking forward to uh, to getting her on tap actually I, I know I know we should wait I know we should have a bit more conditioning uh, but we'll see if we can keep off it I'm gonna put it on some gas just just a little bit of gas and uh, and that's it. This is probably the reason why I don't do too many lagers and pilsners is they take time. If I had a bigger setup, another fermentation fridge, I could just I could just let it go and do its thing. But we need to get ready for next Saturday. It's not a million miles away. This it's, it's not bad. We saw Harry the other day. Came over for lunch, he'd been to sort out some designs and then uh, as he was on his way home we, we met up. And we had a we had a blast actually, as we always do. <laughs> when we get together there's always a story or there's always a conversation that we find hilarious. But you can't have the cameras rolling all the time. We tend to just keep them rolling for the thing that we've got together to do. Um, and that's why I threw up that video story time with Harry because I'm going to do that more often. It had a good response. Um, people took it for what it was, which was just a laugh, just a quick, was it just shy of two minutes, just shy of a two minute video. Just take it for what it was. People did, had a laugh with it, uh, but it was a little insight into what we were talking about on that evening. So that's what I'm going to be doing more often when we meet. I'm going to be dragging some stories out of him. If we're talking about something and we're, we're laughing, I'll say, whoa, 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 camera's on. Just start from the beginning. 
and I'm going to do some more of that. So you've already had episode one, tickers and scoopers, and the response to the brew dog video that went up, the pale independence. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't like doing videos like that where I'm complaining about something. I always feel like I'm going to upset somebody. Um, but again, the response on that was brilliant. You took it for what it was. And um, that's ace. That's ace. I have got a couple of ideas for a series that I'm going to start running because I, my new thing now is looking on Ray Beer <laughs> and reading some of the comments. It makes my day. But yeah, a couple of people have asked me in the comments to the Indie Pale Ale video couple of things uh, that I want to touch on and I'm probably going to put them in a separate video but let's get this keg out and get it cleaned. Let's do it! Keg is in cleaning mode. Tomorrow we'll uh, rinse her out, sanitize her, and roll on with the next video of getting the Pilsner keg and more importantly having the sneak peek, sneak peek taste to see how she's doing. I'm uh, looking forward to that one actually. Well, that's it for this video, fellas. Ooh. Ah, that's it, fellas. So as always, don't forget to watch the videos you want to do. Don't forget to hit this little icon here, subscribe, click it, and you want to start coming up next, share the video, get it up for all to see. And until next time, I'm out of here. <laughs>